यस्मात्तम जगत्सर्व यस्लीयते धार्यते चस्म ज्ञात्मन नम ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्तिद विभागिने व्योमेहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम तैतिकसार से मयाचार्य प्रसाद विस्पष्टाचीना व्याख्य संप्रणीयते ओ सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीकवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मद्विषा वह ओ शाति 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 ओ यदा वैश एकदस्दृश्येनात्मे निरुक्ते निलयने भय प्रतिष्ठा विंदते अथ सोभय यदा वैश एकदरमर कुरुते अथ तस्वती तेवं विदुषो मन्वान से तदप्येश श्लोको सो लास्ट क्लास वी सा दिस बेस बाई विच वी गेट फियर बिकॉज वी वर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द वेरियस एस्पेक्ट ऑफ वॉट वी मे कॉल इट एज फियर सो इफ यू मे रिकलेक्ट we said the first reason why this notion of fear can ever happen to anyone is recognizing that there is a second entity other than oneself if we think there is a second entity other than myself other than oneself there is scope for fear now two types of fear can happen the first is on account of competition because now i am seeing something other than me so it can manifest a certain dimension of fear can manifest through what is called competition you know it is a threat it is overpowering there are so many dimensions a simple idea that when there is a bus comes there is a fear whether i'll get a seat to sit so i have to you know now somehow uh, you know even from such simple things i am saying that a second entity is a requirement for generating fear so one is i broadly call this as competition where uh, there is this scarcity there is this overpowering there is this threat all that can be one possibility the second dimension is comparison if it is not competition it can be a fear of comparison you know you have uh, inferiority complexes superiority complex then you have uh, you know uh, uh, lots of mental issues which comes out of comparison and so on so the second uh, dimension of this second entity as a reality which we live with will give us what is called comparison first is the competition so this is the first factor now second factor is what i call it as deha abhimana body consciousness body consciousness generates its own fear it could be in terms of death separation in terms of uh, diseases all these are uh, broadly under the deha abhimana now it is also important to know 
that uh, deha abhimana is itself a mechanism for creating duality if the deha abhimana grows then the sense of individuality grows uh, you know i am so concerned about there are people who are so concerned about the space about where they sit who sit by the side of them so many issues will come so deha abhimana also generates duality although the type of fear as i said are death disease separation and so on but uh, the second thing that happens is it promotes the existence of this dvaita the duality then third is the fear of the unknown which is what i was trying to talk about now fear of unknown conceptually look at this idea if there is a fear of unknown that itself means there is duality now because there is a known and there is unknown now so the fear of unknown again is an index of our recognizing what is called duality if there is no duality what is unknown everything ought to be known the very fact that there is something called unknown itself is a clear indication that it is coming out of this notion of duality otherwise this unknown is not possible i am logically arguing if there is only one where is the possibility of an unknown so to conversely argue if you have a fear of unknown that means we have already recognize that there is more than there is something other than me that is why the unknown is a, is a domain which i have to tread so that also is arising out of duality and then the last which i talked about is fear out of unethical behavior breaking rules uh, you know all that uh, immoral behavior dot 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 no again all those behaviors are coming only out of duality why do i indulge in unethical behavior why do i indulge in immoral behavior there is a certain sense of me being threatened there is a feeling that i need to self serve i need to strengthen and uh, you know uh, things related to me so the point i am making although i showed four different factors in a nice chart i showed the point i want to make is fundamentally all of them are riding on this fundamental idea that very fundamentally if we have to live with fear de degradation causes live it because we undergo all kinds of fear so if we have to live with a certain aspect of fear the necessary and sufficient condition is to exist something other than me that's all that is all we need this is to critically analyze the fear if there is fear or if there have to be fear what it means is it requires only a simple idea that i must conceptually say there is something other than me only then fear can ever be generated otherwise fear cannot be generated it's a very logical way of putting all these together that is exactly what this shruti is saying this fact that if you get convinced that you are a individual unit then you have to live in a domain of fear the gradation and the pattern and the types can vary so that message is what this shruti is bringing through the mantras which we saw a little bit last week we will see it now just finish this uh, idea so yada yada hi eva yesha yetasmin in this and how does how is this look like this is adrishye this cannot be seen if there is only one for seeing you need a second there is a subject and an object for seeing you need two entities if there is only one entity you can't see what are you going to see you can't see anything that's why adrishye actually indicates that it is oneness that is the meaning of adrishye anatmye again if there is one then you cannot condition with my bodies 
you can't divide, you know, divide it into smaller pieces. Let's say anatmye. Anatmye, anirukte. If it is a vast expanse of one thing, what are you going to divide? I mean, that's why, you know, in astrology, it's simple space. They don't know how to divide it. So artificially they have put 30 degrees and made 360 degrees is split into 30 degrees each. And they call it a zodiac. It's only an artificial tag. There is nothing uh, special about it. Uh, just to, because it's all cannot be determined. Because it is one. It's one vast expanse. So anirukte, abhayam. That is only when all these are there, abhayam will come. Pratishtam Vindate, your thing is, it establishes in a concept called fearlessness. That is the meaning of this mantra. So this mantra is saying that fearlessness will happen only when we are able to conceptually, experientially come to a conclusion there is only one God particle which can manifest in its own ways. I mean, it is easier said than, than done. But that is the argument. That's why all these uh, ataha, from that, thereafter, consequently, because this oneness is now recognized, ataha, saha abayam gataha bhavati, that person who is able to revel in that oneness, will reach a state of fearlessness. Janaka was told, abayam vai prapto si janaka, yajna valkya said, in Brahadaranyaka Upanishad, Abhayam Vai Prapta Osi Janaka. You have become fearless. He is able to see through these commonality beyond the seeming divisions. So that is what this mantra is saying. Now in Mudaka Upanishad, this is a very nice mantra. It says, Bidyate Hrithaya Granthihi Chidyante Sarva Samshayaha Kshiyante Cha Asya karmani, tasmin drishte paravare, develop that vision, paravare, in that vision, which is the same, above and below. Tasmin drishte, in that vision, what will happen? It says, vidyate hrde grandihi. This knot, this, this complex thing which is constraining us, that knot in the heart is unknotted. That's what it says, vidyate, it, it, it's being unknotted. Which means this infinite energy which is locked in the Hridaya Kuhare, in that cave of the heart will be released. Because these, these, these constraints and these restrictions are the ones which are, you know, which are blocking this flow of this energy. So that's what he says, Bidyate Hridaya Granti, Chidyante Sarva Samshayaha, all doubts obliterate. So many things are sorted out. Because when we see it in small, small compartments, we will, this is like six blind men seeing an elephant. As long as they are seeing pieces, they have a certain understanding of it, and they have only a certain perspective of it. It can generate fear, it can generate happiness, it can generate anything. Moment the wholesome picture is understood, that is resolved. All doubts are obliterated. So that's why he says, Chidyante Sarva Samshayaha, Kshiyante Chasya Karmani. This, this whole idea of why do we work and what do we work, what vasanas we collect out of work, all of them will go. The clarity will take out a lot of things out of us, so vasanas will stop accumulating. Because that is the only way by which liberation will happen. So that's why he says, Kshiyante, it shrinks, it keeps on shrinking. Asya Karmani. Means his vasanas will start evaporating. Because this clarity is there now. There is nothing to worry and be tensed about. There is a larger understanding of life and then I keep going. When tasmin drishte paravare. When this vision of oneness is understood and serious effort is made to experience. And that slightest experience is all that we need. So Mdugopanisha says it in a different way. Tasmin drishte paravare. Then the Shruti said, Yada hevesha yetasmin udaram antaram kurute. Yetasmin udaram antaram kurute. Ata 
tasya bhayam bhavati. So it says, yada when, when in that, in that perspective or in that concept, in that idea, which is the real idea, which is the original thing, in that udaram antaram kurute, antaram is the slightest, udaram is the dent or you know samshaya or you may you you create a certain distinction the oneness is now cut into even the slightest piece make a small hairline thick crack and then make it two udaram antaram kurute moment that is done atatasya bhayam bhavati then thereafter he will get fear now oh, this usage is so interesting Look at the usage. This is a very important thing to understand. So you know what it is suggesting? It is suggesting inherently we are one. We are now tweaking it. That is what it is saying. It is saying inherently it was one. You only created the difference. That is how the position it has taken. It never said it is already separate. You take a gum and start sticking it. It is not saying like that. It is coming from the other side. It is saying when you do it. So that usage, there is a subtlety in that usage. Because the entire Vedantic wisdom, which people like uh, Vivekananda all the time was saying, Vayam Sarve Amartya Purushaha, Shweta Shara Upanishad, Vivekananda quite often used to, we are all children of divinity. So what is the idea? Our Vedantic uh, knowledge says, you are inherently perfect. You have done something on it basic material is pure you added impurity same thing it is saying here so in other words how do somebody get jnana nobody can get jnana because we are jnana maya just because the panchaya kosha also said that you cannot get jnana but when you know in a figurative sense when you say he gets jnana what we mean is we remove the jnana it is inherently good, it's like there is a mirror. Chapter 3 of Bhagavad Gita has this. In, you know, last four shlokas, he gives three different examples. Just like a mirror is completely covered with dirt. If a mirror is completely covered with dirt, you have to only remove the dirt. Mirror inherently has a capability to radiate images. It is temporarily, you know, covered. That is a first example it gives in you know, 39th uh, shloka or something in chapter 3. 40th shloka he says, Yata ulbanam. Just like the, the shishu is covered in a womb, you have to take it out. It is, it is shrouded in some cover. You at the time, at the right time, you have to remove it. So it is already there. We are not seeing it. So it is peeling away the. So here, what Shruti is saying, it is coming from the other side. It is saying how we added the layer. Then later it says remove the layer. So it says, Etasmin udaram antaram kurute. You made the slightest distinction. Ideally you should not have. Because you made that slightest distinction, Ataha tasya bhayam bhavati. He got fear. So all of us entered into a fear because we created the duality. That's what Shruti is saying. Inherently, we don't have to, but we created. In fact, we are playing a reverse game. This is a very funny game we are playing. We, you know, uh, uh, we make ourselves imperfect and then spend a phenomenal time to discover that perfection. Looks like. You know, that is the kind of uh, uh, game that we seem to be playing. It is perfection, but we first cover it. Then let's say, let's now try to uncover it and rediscover it and finally. Something like that is what it is saying. Tathu eva, tathu eva bhayam, the same entity which was abhayam, tathu eva bhayam abhavata. That's what it is saying. So the Brahman is both bhayam and abhayam. It, it is the eye of the beholder. If you see Brahman as one, that Brahman is a matter of joy. It's anandamaya kosha. But if you see Brahman as split into pieces in all possibilities, you know, we have, we have, you know, 
inherently we have that problem. We have, you know, split on the basis of language, on the basis of gender, on the basis of caste, on the basis of so many things we are doing it in Vyavahara. So all those will introduce its own dimensions of fear because conceptually when you see more than one you have to have fear. That is a message which it is really pushing. So Amanvanasya, he is not a good thinker. He is not a manvanaha, it is a amanvanaha. He is not a good thinker, he has not reflected properly. Because he did not reflect properly, he got into fear. So that is what uh, it actually uh, says in this uh, mantra. So the point it is making, I think at the end of it, what is the mantra? It is called Ubaya Pratishta. I have put a subtitle to this called Ubaya Pratishta on the top. It's called Ubaya Pratishta because Brahman manifests both ways. Ubaya. Both ways. If we see oneness, it manifests as real joy, power and bliss and so on. If you see it as a differentiated lot, it will manifest as fear. That's why it's called Ubaya Pratishta. It manifests itself in both ways. So uh, these ideas are everywhere. But these two are connected to one another. So I thought I will, uh, you know, just give that mantras. In Viveka Chudamani he says, Paripurnam anadi anadyantam anadi and anantam also. Anadyantam aprameyam avikriyam that which is not amenable for transaction. Avikriyam is that which is not available for, vikriya is transacting. Selling or transacting, I mean, meaning is transacting. And then paripurnam, full. Anadhyantam, beginningless, endless. Nasadi Yasuktam I showed. Anadhyantam, aprameyam. It is not uh, limited and measured. It is not measured in a few limited ways. So that, ekameva dvayam. It is one without a second. It is at the end of the day, you know, some, some total of all of that is that one entity, the God particle. Right? Na iha nana asti kinchana. Here it can never be in multiple, I mean, if you understand it in multiple ways, there is a problem. That's what he says. Na iha nana asti. It never is here in multiple ways, although we may see it like that. We may see it like that, you know, it is like this. It is, uh, he says, in some other places he mentions this example. He says, let's say there is a child sitting with the mother and the mother has a mirror. So there is a, you know, let's, uh, let's say there's some image which is reflecting in the mirror. Correct? So there is, a, wow, the child looks at the image, let's say there is an image of a dog, the child says there is a dog. The child is at a level of ignorance, it has not understood the bimba pridibimba and all that. So it says, Amma, there is a dog. Suppose you put the mirror, it gets 20 pieces, you will find 20 dogs there. Actually, there will be 20 dogs. So a child will think there are 20 dogs. So this Nanatva is like that. The, the Satsit Ananda is reflecting. It is reflecting in multiple mediums. Just to understand uh, Prithak Prithak, separate, separate, is a level of ignorance. That is the you know simile that they give that one reflected image, just because the reflecting medium became many, for whatever reason, and by seeing many images, how can we come to a conclusion there are many objects? The original is only one. The images are many on account of the fact that the reflecting medium is many. So that is the point. So, never there can be multiplicity, the reflecting mediums are many. It reflects in many mediums. Therefore, it appears. You know, there is this nice story. In fact, in South Indian temples, I don't know why I have seen it in Karnataka. I am sure it should be there. In Tamil Nadu, I have seen. There is this Darpana Mandapa. Full of mirrors. You actually, in Madurai temple and all, I have seen. If you get into the, that room, you should see thousands of you. It used to actually remind this. It says, Sukshmartha there. It is actually to remind this. That the multiplicity that you see are one source. How do you how do you tell it? In temples they have darpana mandapa for that. 
you go in there and you see thousand Mahadevans, don't come to your conclusion there are thousand Mahadevans. It doesn't make sense. It is this one which is reflecting in thousand mirrors. That is the idea. Whereas, you know, there is a story, a dog went in and then the dog saw there are thousand dogs ferociously looking at it because this dog was ferocious. So there are thousand dogs looking at it ferociously, so it got very annoyed. He said, why is this world so cruel? I just came to one corner, a thousand fellows who are around me. So it barked. So the thousand dogs barked down. Moment this dog barked, thousand dogs also, dogs also barked. So this dog got even more ferocious by its very nature. It's, it, it pounced on one of the dogs, that dog also pounced. All the thousand dogs pounced on it. So it kept fighting, fighting these dogs and it felt tired. Then one fellow came in and laughed at it, took the dog and threw it away. And then after six hours, eight hours slowly, it gathered its uh, strength and went away. This is what we are doing, in some sense. This nanatva puts us into that. All kinds of fights, all kinds of uh, subdivisional things and all that. In Vyavahara, at one level, we are doing all that. So that Darpana Mandapa, you put a dog there and put a person there, you should make a difference. So we have to choose whether we want to be dogs or a person. That is why the Darpana, Darpana Mandapa is there in temples. I am told, I heard somewhere, I thought uh, there is a lot of sense in that. So, that is what he says, Neha Nana Stikinchana. Kata Upanishad says the same thing. Look at what it is saying. Yedeveha tad amutra. Yed eva iha tad amutra. What you see here, you have to see elsewhere. Elsewhere meaning everywhere. Elsewhere meaning other than this. That is the meaning of elsewhere. So, Yedeveha tad amutra. Yed amutra tad viha. What you see elsewhere, you must be able to see here. Right? If you are not, if you are not able to see that, the next line says, Mrityoho saha mrityum apnoti. People who cannot develop this perspective will go from one death to another death. Janma, Janma jara vyadi marana. Janma jara vyadi marana. Janma jara vyadi marana. This is a cycle. So he says, Mrityoho saha mrityum apnoti. Who? Yeha. That person. Yeha naneva pashyati. He is seeing world of multiplicity here. That's what Katopanishad says in the second line. Yeha yeha naneva pashyati saha mrityoho mrityum apnoti. From one death he will go to another death. He will go through this train of birth and death. That's what Katopanishad is saying. So these so different Upanishads talk the same ideas. That's why I gave one idea from Mundaka Upanishad, one idea from Katopanishad, because they are all telling it from different, different ways. But the fact is the same, that uh, a non-duality feeling is one which will take fear. Otherwise the fear generates karmas, karmas generate vasanas. Then you know we get into a, a broader framework of things which takes us again and again through janma and samsara and things like that. So that is what these mantras are saying. So it said tadapyesha shloko bhavati. So the Rigveda quote is now going to come because the entire Brahmananda Valley is like that. It tells four sentences and says, I will now quote it from Rigveda. That's why Tadapyesha Shloko Bhavati. The following verse talks about it. So let's see that uh, following verse. So we, this is a fairly a long Anuvaka, penultimate Anuvaka, beautiful Anuvaka. It's called Brahmananda Mimamsa, an inquiry into Brahmananda. It's a very long uh, anuvaka. Anyway, I'll recite it. So beautiful to recite also. So I'll recite it first and then we will see. Bishasma dvataf pavate bisho deti surya bishasma dagnis chendrascha mrityur dhavati panchama iti saishanandasya mima gumsa bhavati Yuvasya sadhu yuvadhyayakaha asishto dhridishto balishtaha tasyeyam prithivi sarva vittasya purnasyat sa eko manusha anandaha te yeshatam manusha anandaha sa eko manushya gandharva namanandaha shrotriyasya chaka mahatasya 
ते ये शतम मनुष्य गंधर्वाना मानंदा सयेको देव गंधर्वाना मानंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम देव गंधर्वाना मानंदा सयेक पितरनाम चिरलोकलोका ना मानंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम पितरनाम चिरलोकलोका ना मानंदा सायेक आजान जानाम देवाना मानंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम आजान जानाम देवाना मानंदा सायेक कर्म देवाना देवाना मानंदा ये कर्मना देवाना पिरियंति श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम कर्म देवाना देवाना मानंदा सायेको देवाना मानंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम देवाना मानंदा सायेक इंद्रस्य नंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम इंद्रस्य नंदा सायेको ब्रह्मस्पतेरा नंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम ब्रह्मस्पतेरा नंदा सायेक प्रजापतेरा नंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य ते ये शतम प्रजापतेरा नंदा सायेको ब्रह्मना आनंदा श्रोत्रियस्य चाका महतस्य सायस्चायम पुरुषे यस्चासावादित्ये सायेका सायए बंबित अस्मालोकात प्रेत्य ये तमन्नमयमात्मानमुपसंक्रामति ये तम प्राणमयमात्मानमुपसंक्रामति ये तम मनोमयमात्मानमुपसंक्रामति ये तम विज्ञानमयमात्मानमुपसंक्रामति ये तम आनंदमयमात्मानमुपसंक्रामति तदप्येशश्लोको भवति इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल uh, long, uh, however long it is. Remember, there were three questions. Earlier, there were three questions. One implied question whether Brahman exists or not. So far, the argument is Brahman exists. It used uh, seven types of uh, arguments. It said Brahman is the Nimitta Karana, Brahman is the Upadana Karana, Brahman manifests in Jiva Rupa. Third, Brahman is one which is uh, the Chetana. The, in, the, from, in the Achetana, there is a Chetana that you see, that is also a Brahman. Brahman is Rasa, Rasamaya. Raso Vaisaha. Right? Then there were seven such arguments. I don't remember the other two. Brahman is uh, the one which uh, generates fear. The, 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 the feeling of fear that we have is an, is, reminds us of Brahman. So like that, there are seven arguments. Because there was this implied question, Brahman exists or not. Now there are two more questions which we never, the Shruti never answered. Uta vidwan amul lokam pretya kaschana gaschati. Aho vidwan amul lokam pretya kaschit samasnuta. This known person who knows Brahman, where does he grow? Where does he go? Person who does not know Brahman, what happens to him? That is being answered in this long passage. That's why it says, "Ye taman namayam atmanam upasankramati, ye tamam you know pranamayam atmanam." He crosses this, crosses this, crosses this like that. It gives an answer to this uh, question, which has not been answered yet. Now this is uh, see, mimamsa means a deep inquiry. That's why it's called puro mimamsa and uttara mimamsa. Mimamsa is a research-oriented inquiry. If I would use some modern terms. A deep inquiry, contemplation into understanding something is called Mimamsa. That's why our uh, thing called Purva Mimamsa, which is uh, Atato Dharma Jignasa. And Uttara Mimamsa says Atato Brahma Jignasa. This is Brahma Sutra and there is Dharma Sutra. So that is uh, inquiry into the first part, this is inquiry into the second part. So Mimamsa means research. So here is a research on Brahmananda. Brahmananda Mimamsa, this particular uh, section. So we need to develop a good understanding of Ananda. You remember we had this Pancha Kosha being discussed in Brahmananda only. 
So the last one was Anandamaya Kosha. Brahma Pucham Pratishta. That's how we ended. It said it is in this Anandamaya Kosha, the, it's, it's, its support is the Brahman. So Brahman is the root cause of Ananda. That is what uh, it said. It is a Ananda Kosha. It is a limited packet of Ananda. It's a Kosha Ananda. Whereas here it talks about Brahma Ananda. So the question is, what is this Kosha Ananda and Brahma Ananda? Little bit we'll get that understanding before we get into this Anuvaka. But before that, there are these Tatap Yesha Shloka, but the fear. Tatash Yeta Shloka Bhavati, it ended. So that quota, that quote must come, then Brahma Ananda Mimamsa. So that quote is here. So it says, Bhishasma Dvataf Pavate. It says, this uh, Vataha, that Vataha, Bhisha, Asmad Bhishaha, out of fear of that, Pavate, it moves about. That's why it's called Pavana. Pavaka, Pavana, Pavana, Pavanatmaja is uh, Hanuman. Na? So pa Pavate is that which moves about. That is the root. Right? So, Bisha Asmat, Bisha Asmat, out of fear of that, of that concept of Brahman, it's a, we'll first see the, you know, Stulartha, then we'll see the, so it says, Asmat Bisha, Vataha Pavate, the wind blows on account of the fear, fear of that Lord, that is a, you know, uh, Stulartha, Bisho Deti Surya the Surya rises every day out of fear. Bishaha Udeti Surya. So the sun rises on account of fear. That's what it says. Then it says, Bisha Asmat Agnischa Indrascha. This uh, Agni and Indra, they also do whatever duties that they are supposed to do because Indra is all about thunder, lightning, water, rain, and all that. And Agni is the fire. So the Panchabhutas will be somewhere here in some ways. If you see. So, Bisha, Asmad Bisha, Agni Hicha, Indrascha. So, Agni and Indra also works on account of the fear. That's what it says. Mrityuhu Davati Panchamaiti. Panchama means the fifth. There are four already mentioned. The four are uh, Vayu, Surya, Agni, and Indra. So, this is the fifth one, which is Mrit Mrityu, the Yama, the Lord of Death. The Lord of Death also works ceaselessly on account of fear. So that's what it is saying. The mantra is saying, so this is a Rigvedic quote for fear, which, which, is, which we ended with the previous mantra. Iti. Iti is the end of the quote. So it says, Mrityurdhavati panchama iti. The iti is the end of the Rigvedic quote. So after that only that Brahmananda Mimamsa starts. Okay. So the point is, at one level, the first question we need to ask is, why are, why are all these working? Now, it, it works at such a precision. It, I mean, it's such a complex thing. I don't know how much we are able to get out of science. You know, we are able to attribute it to a certain kind of thing. But we, what we cannot attribute is why Agni must continue to have its warmth. Why not it uh, do something else? Or, you know, water, why does it have that sapidity? Raso Vaisaha, that you know, uh, Rasopsu Aham Kaunteya. That's what he says in Bhagavad Gita, he says in chapter 7, he gives these kinds of examples. He says, Rasaha Apsu Kaunteya Aham. The sapidity you see in water, see God there. That's what Krishna said there. That sapidity which is an inherent property. In other words, what one level to understand is, who caused all these inherent properties and made sure that inherent property, I mean, we are only seeing it. We are putting some scientific experiments and seeing it. Vedanta is all about who, not what or how. The question is, who did that? How did the whole thing start? And why do they work with certain... So in other words, first of all, the, the easy understanding of the fear, which uh, Bhashya and everybody also say, is this quote is saying that in our scheme of things, to become a Deva, you have to have bountiful of good karmas. So let us look at where is it coming from. First of all, it says, I have now taken people who are supposed to have had 
enormous amount of good karma that they have been rewarded. These are all positions actually. Surya and Vayu and Agni are actually positions where people are appointed. That is our scheme of things. And in order to get appointed there, you must have acquired so much of credit. No, today you have all this payback and all that. Na? You have 30,000 points, you can buy a bed sheet. Maybe 50,000 points, you can buy something else. In our you put petrol, you get some payback points. So it's a similar idea only. The yajna, good karma and all that. So these, enti these entities that we are talking about have come with a great amount of good karma. What is this Rigveda saying? Even with all that good karma, they are still reveling in the idea of duality or that one more than one. That is why they have fear. That is what it is trying to first communicate. It is trying to communicate no great your power is, no great your karma and all that is. If you are not able to step out of the domain of you and the rest, you will be seized with fear. So that is the message. So this fear has to be first understood that way. That all these entities have their own identity and through that identity they are still seeing duality other than myself. That's why they have to have fear and on that fear only they have to work. That is one way to understand. But the other way to understand this mantra is to say that fear is a very figurative word. Basically what is it saying? It is saying the lords of the Lord manifest itself as cosmic order. It's called rhythm. It is that rhythm in English. There is a rhythm. And that rhythm is a manifestation of that cosmic order. That is why climates happen. There is uh, out of all these complex processes, out of all these chaos of this physical system, there is still an order. There is still an order which governs the chaos. And there is an order which actually, you know, we are not able to see that order is not the same as saying there is no order. Although science fancies itself doing that kind of uh, uh, assumption sometimes. Our inability to see an order is not equal to an order does not exist. It is equal to saying it is not manifesting now, it is not evident to me, it is, I am not able to make sense of it. And I think that is the path on which anyway we will progress from using a metaphor of science. But uh, we can't say it doesn't exist. So maybe this mantra is saying this fact that these all these natural forces work, these complex natural forces seem to have so much of harmony with which, why can't uh, you know uh, earth rotate a little slower? At least we'll have more than 24 hours for a day. That way life can be a little more uh, easier. Why is it not, you know, I mean we use physics and gravitational force, these are all tags we are using. And we are explaining the how part of it. We are not able to explain the who part of it. So this mantra in a way says that all these must remind us that there is the lords of the lord. Lord of the lords, I'm sorry. Lord of the lords which must exist. So that is being in a way communicated by this uh, kind of uh, mantra. That uh, the rhythmic order that we see, the rhythm, the satyam and the rhythm that we see, satyam cha rhythm cha satyam abhavata also came just now in that mantra Brahmananda I am the satya, I am the rita, I am the sat. All I created. So that is being reminded through this shloka that you have. Then we get into this Ananda Mimamsa, which is continuing after this mantra. So in Panchadeshi, I was, I was I started, I've been reading a little bit of Panchadeshi because the reason I was reading Panchadeshi, Panchadeshi is written by Vidyaranya, this great Rajarishi. It is called Panchadeshi because there are 15 chapters. That's why it's called Panchadeshi. The last five chapters are on Ananda. That's why I, I was sort of going through it. Because uh, since I know that there is Ananda Mimamsa which is going to come, I was reading, uh, it is called, you know, Yogananda, Advaita Ananda, Vishayananda, Vidyananda, like that, there are five chapters. It ends with that. So people say, the Brahmananda is now described in five different layers of sophistication. Vishayananda is the lowest, then Vidyananda, then Advaita Ananda, Yogananda, and Brahman, like that. So anyway, so I, since I was reading, I saw a few. So he extensively quotes in Panchadrishi from all, you know, Upanishads and all this. So this is exactly what he says here. Look at what he is saying. Vayuhu, he is quoting the Rigveda mantra only in a different way. 
வாயுகு சூரியக வன்னிகி இந்திரக மிருத்யுகு exactly that five in that exactly the same order bishasma dwatav pavate bishote di suryah bishatma agnischa indrascha mrityur davati so in that order only it is coming copy <laughs> yes you know there have been there have difficulty in copying it is better you you know tell where from you have taken and so on he says uh, why you he says is from katopanishad like that he quite often says vayuhu suryah vannihi indraha and uh, i think this is not on i think okay mrityu all these five he says janmantare antaram krutva in the previous janma although they did a lot of good karma they got into this mode of distinction udaram antaram kurute he said in taitra upanishad he uses the same word antaram on account of the fact that created they got into the mode of duality right janmantare although they did a lot of good karma for which they were rewarded these positions but what they carried with them is this this feeling of not one so janmantare antaram krutva huh? dharmam huh? yeah not indra up to brahma i'll show you brahma and the mimamsa we will see all these are positions it's a very detailed uh, 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 you know uh, so when we see the bhimam is a little bit i will say because uh, so dharmam vijananti api even though they knew they had the body of knowledge they could not experience and internalize it and practice it for themselves see knowing is one practicing is another we all have our own you know knowledge versus practice gap there is a very long gap we can have a lot of knowledge this is a genuine problem that we go through so it says dharmam vijananti api asmad bhitya charanti why asmad bhitya charanti because janmantare antaram krutva although they had the know how they could not translate it into reality therefore they they are suffering from the duality since they have duality they have to also have fear so that is what he is saying in this shloka in a way he is sort of trying to explain that uh, rigveda quote like this and as i told you panchadashi has five chapters on ananda uh, of course he said ananda ha trividha ha he says there are three types of ananda brahma ananda ha vidya sukham athava vidya ananda ha tatha vishaya ananda ha iti in chapter 11 to 15 is a discussion on ananda so in the first chapter itself he first it says there are three types of ananda so although i was looking for a cute definition for each one of them which is not there it is a very you know it is being discussed in a particular way wherever i could get a definition i could bring way he was trying to you know explain it so in 14th chapter he says vishayanandavat just like vishayananda vidyananda divritti rupakah so it is this contemplation of the buddhi through which you will get vidyananda and vishayananda that's what he is trying to say vishayanandavat vidyananda ha divritti rupakah and dukkha abhavat abha dukkha bhavadi rupena dukkha bhavati dukkha abhavadi rupena there is a uh, dirga dar hraswana dukkha bhavadi which means dukkha abhavadi huh? दुखाभावादि रूपेण प्रोक्तः एषः चतुर्विदः सो सो ही गिव्स टू इंपॉर्टेंट मेसेजेस फर्स्ट ही सेड देयर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ आनंदस ही सेड ब्रह्मानंद देन विद्यानंद एंड विषयानंद ही सेज दिस विषयानंद एंड विद्यानंद आर एट द ब्रेन एट द क्षेत्रम लेवल इट इज इन अ कंटेम्पलेशन रिफ्लेक्शन एडजस्टिंग आवर बिहेवियरल पैटर्न एट दैट लेवल दैट्स व्हाट ही सेज विषयानंद एंड विद्यानंद आर दीवृत्ति रूपकः when you cross all these buddhi chitta ahankara and go then comes brahmananda so that is outside of this domain that's the first point he is making and he says this vidyananda has the property of vidyananda is dukkhasya bhava and also it is four types he says what are those two four types dukkhasya bhava etal abhavadi and also so there are four he is talking what are those dukkhasi abhava first he says if you have vidyananda your dukkha will not be there bhiti is different from dukkha 
ದುಃಖಸ್ಯ ಅಭಾವ ಭೀತಿಯ ಅಭಾವ ಈ ನವ ಸೆಡ್ ದುಃಖಸ್ಯ ಅಭಾವ ದುಃಖ ಅಭಾವ ಕಾಮಾಪ್ತಿ ಫುಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಮ ಇನಫ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಇ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ದ ವಿದ್ಯಾನಂದ ದಿ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನ ಆಫ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾನಂದ ಕಾಮಾಪ್ತಿ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ದಟ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯ ಭಾವ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯ ಅಹಂ ಇತಿ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಮ್ ದ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಸೈಯರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ದುಃಖ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಸಿ ದುಃಖ ಇಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಸಿ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಅಜಿಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಓ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಮೋಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಟು ಮೀನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯ ಭಾವ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದುಃಖ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪೋತ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಸೊ ಇ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ದೆನ್ ಇ ಸೇಸ್ ಅಸೌ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ಯ ವಾಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ದ ಅಚೀವ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಚೀವ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹಿ ದುಃಖಸ್ಯ ಅಭಾವ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ಪ್ರಯೋಜನ ಇ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ವಿಧಾಸ್ ಅಹಂ ಇತಿ ಚಾತುರ್ವಿದ್ಯಂ ಉದಾಹೃತ ಈ ಸೇ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಔ ಎ ವಿದ್ಯಾನಂದ ಮಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಯು ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಅವಿದ್ಯ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದೀಸ್ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅವಿದ್ಯ ಸೊ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಇನ್ ಯು ನೋ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ದಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದುಃಖ ವಿ ರಾಯಲ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ದಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದುಃಖ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಫೈಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ದೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಟೀಚ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೂಮ್ ಸೊ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಬ್ಲೇಮ್ ಮೀ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ but uh, so it is avidya by this by this sense of the term it is avidya so you have to put a disclaimer for them when you teach no they they will put a disclaimer you get out of the classroom <laughs> anyway so basically what he is saying is a true good vidya def- definition of vidya is which should we should make us more contented no See, leave all other things aside you know in a lighter vein all that let it be there i think the more serious issue is the true definition of vidya is which makes you a complete person which is what swami vivekananda says what did swami vivekananda said education must make you complete we are not there that kind of education is not in our framework vidya must make me complete vidya must make sure that propensity for me to feel dejected propensity for me to feel misery must come down it doesn't come down we i'll have to go back to the drawing board and ask our education planners have to do it they have to ask what education what we are doing because it cannot lead me to more and more misery or more and more tension more and more uh, you know many things so that is what he is saying vidyananda must lead to that kind of a situation anyway so before we get into the brahmananda mimamsa we should understand that so far in brahmananda valli he talked about anandamaya kosha so there there you know maya pratyaya we said vikarartha it's it is constrained it is limited that was the definition you see in the bhashya's alma acharya's bhashya you will see that so the question is what is the difference between these two we have to get that uh, clear then we will see the brahmananda mimamsa what is essentially the difference between atmananda and koshananda in other words brahmananda atmananda or atmananda whatever atmananda and koshananda what is the difference so there are four important parameters on which we must four attributes with which we can differentiate the first attribute is bimba pratibimba a brahmananda is like a bimba it's like an object whereas a koshananda is a reflected image of the object there's a huge difference between the object and the reflected image there's a huge difference between the two because you know if you if you have an object moment you say i am if you reflect it if you fail to understand that is a reflected image and this is the object but adi shankara when he went to banaras taking bath 
when Chandala came, he said, move, move. At that time, Chandala sprang back with a beautiful shloka. He said, Annamayat, Annamayam. Chaitanyam eva Chaitanyat. Dujavari, Dujavira, Dujavara. Duri kartu vanchasi, kimbru hi gacha gacheti. When you said, move, move, you wanted the Annamaya to move from Annamaya or Chaitanya to move from Chaitanya. Like that. Then there was a second shloka. We said, Kim Ganga Ambuni Ambaramano Chandala Viti Payaha Pure Vantaramasti Kanchana Gadi Mrit Kumbayorva Ambare Pratyag Vastuni Nistaranga Sahajananda Ababodam Budo Viproyam Shopachoyam Iti Mahan Koyam Vibeda Brahmaha. Beautiful shloka. It says, Kim Ganga Ambuni, crystal clear waters of Ganges. Kim, what? He is asked, the Chandala asked two questions actually to Ayushankara. Two questions. First question is, Ganga Ambuni Bimba Ramano, Amba Ramano, this uh, sun's thing is getting reflected. That is the object. I am now talking about the reflected image. Kim Ganga Ambuni Amba Ramano Chandala Viti Payaha. The sun can reflect on crystal clear waters of Ganges. The sun can reflect on the dirty water in front of a slum. This is the first example. Sun can reflect on a crystal clear water. Sun can reflect on a dirty water. This is the first example. Second example, Pure Vantara Masti Kanchana Gati Mrit Kumbaha. There is, you take a golden part, you take a mud part, fill both of them half with something. Rice, water, whatever. So now the question is, which space is a superior space? The space in a golden pot or the space in a mud pot? This is the second question. Pureva antara masti, Pureva antara masti, Kanchana gati, which is a golden pot, Mrit kumbaha, which is a mud pot. He says, which one is ambasi? Which, which space is a better space? Pureva antara masti, Kanchana gati, Mrit ambayorva ambare. Pratyag, after asking these two questions, then the third line comes Pratyag vastuni. In every vastu, Nistaranja Sagajananda Avabodam Budau. There is this, uh, this core kernel of every vastu is that Satchit Ananda. Pratyak Vastuni Nistaranga Sagajananda Avabodam Budau. When you have understood that, Viproyam Shapachoyam iti Mahan Koyam Vibeda Brahmaha. Where did you get this confusion? That was that, that shloka. But the point is, the reason I brought that shloka is if you mistake image to the object you are in deep trouble you will be completely misinformed na? on seeing a dirty sun and the dirty water you will come to a conclusion sun is dirty which is a huge mistake it, and then sun will become a shaking sun because the water will now start shaking now you will introduce the next property to the sun sun generally jumps up and down so I can go on putting a set of ideas if you understand Pratibimba is, if you think Pratibimba is a reality, then you have missed the essence. Or you know, sun is reflecting on a, on a mirror, I break the mirror and say there are no, generally there can be any number of suns as you want. I can come to that conclusion. So it will lead us into a total path of ignorance. That is the point I am trying to make. So Koshananda is like a Pratibimba. It is a reflected ananda. It is not the original ananda. It is an ananda which is reflected. The moment you say it is a reflected ananda, then it is inevitable that you need a reflecting medium. If it is an image, then you need a reflecting medium. So now the question is, then we are ready, we are ready in a position to say that the reflection can be many now. The quality of reflection can be many. Because it depends on the medium. If the mirror is uh, smoky, you don't get a good reflection. The mirror is crystal clear, you get a good reflection. If the mirror is, uh, you know, having a shade of some other thing, you will get that also in the reflection. So the first thing we need to understand in this whole Ananda discussion is Kosha Ananda is an imperfect, perhaps, version of the originality because it critically depends on the medium which is reflecting it. You and I are the medium. Or the manas is the medium. Rather than saying you and I, the manas is the medium. 
Manas is the mirror on which this Brahman is reflecting. That Atmananda is now mapping to us through a mirror. So much depends on the mirror. So this is the first issue. Three more we will see in the next class. It's already seven. We will stop here. We will continue in the next class. Thank you.